Hi, this is Steve Rendell for FAIR TV. Here's some of the things we've noticed in the news this week. Coverage of the so-called fiscal cliff could use a lot of things. For starters, some discussion of how it's not a cliff would be nice. CBS Evening News took a different approach, though, deciding that viewers would be best served by hearing what CEOs had to think about it. So on November 19th, there was Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein telling viewers the country cannot afford Social Security and Medicare. And the next night, Honeywell CEO David Cote was on to talk about the country's debt crisis. His fix? Reduce tax deductions. Exactly what Republicans have been saying, too. And the next night, more from Mr. Goldman Sachs, who warned that falling off the cliff would be bad for the stock market, quote, which is, you know, a source of people's wealth. People will feel poor, close quote. Now, most people don't think of the stock market as the source of their wealth, and at least 50 million Americans feel poor because they are. These CEOs and others are part of the corporate-financed Fix the Debt campaign, making the rounds to demand cuts in social programs along with tax breaks for, well, themselves. It's a campaign that deserves scrutiny. CBS gave them a megaphone. If you opened your November 28th edition of USA Today, you saw this headline. Diagram suggests Iran working on bomb. The piece was short, but long enough to scare readers into thinking something big had been uncovered. The article from the Associated Press explains that an anonymous source, quote, from a country critical of Iran's atomic program, close quote, leaked a diagram allegedly showing Iran is working on a bomb. One that would, as the AP puts it in the lead, quote, produce more than triple the explosive force of the World War II bomb that destroyed Hiroshima, close quote. But the only named source that appeared in the USA Today version of the AP story was American researcher David Albright, who told them it looked like a fairly basic document. The secret graph didn't appear in USA Today, but you could find it on the AP website. It shows curves, one plotting energy versus time, the other power output versus time. That doesn't look all that special to us, but we're not scientists. Some actual researchers did look at it, though, and spotted a big problem. Writing at the website of the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, two researchers pointed out that the diagram has a simple fatal flaw, a nearly million-fold error, as they put it. They dismissed the graph as either slipshod analysis or an amateurish hoax. Either way, the Associated Press fell for it. And finally, the New York Times editorial page weighed in on November 30th with some criticism of the Obama administration's drone wars. The paper wants some accountability. It argues that the government, quote, must stay within formal guidelines based on the rule of law, close quote. That's all well and good, but when the paper tries to explain the fallout from the drone attacks in Pakistan, it fails in one big respect. As the editorial reads, Using drones, the Central Intelligence Agency has made 320 strikes in Pakistan since 2004, killing 2,560 or more people, including at least 139 civilians, according to the Long War Journal, a website that tracks counterterrorism operations. Now, that is the tally that you get from the Long War Journal, and it would be an astonishingly low rate of civilian death. That number is fiercely contested, however, by other researchers who have tracked the CIA drone program. The British Bureau of Investigative Journalism estimates the civilian death toll at least four times greater, a conclusion that has been reached by others as well. So why would the Times choose to use what would appear to be one of the lowest available estimates of the civilian toll? It's not that the Times is unaware of the Bureau's work. In February, it reported on its research. But in what seemed like a wrong-headed idea of balance, it allowed an anonymous U.S. government source to smear the Bureau as al-Qaeda sympathizers. In the end, the editorial's call for the government to give a clearer picture of the drone policy is undercut by the fact that the paper does not seem all that interested in telling readers how many innocents have been killed. On that count, the Times and the U.S. government have a very similar position. This has been Steve Rendell. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.